Welcome to Radio Tony and the Passion Project. Join us live each week as we journey into the world of passion. Want to live life passionately? Finding your passion could be the difference between living life in the everyday and living life with meaning and purpose. Take these weekly lessons into life and business. Interact with your host, Tony Lontis, and her passion project facilitator, Peter Wallman, as we conduct a passion mapping exercise with Tony live on air. Passion is everything. And good afternoon, Australia, and good evening, America. You're listening to Tony Lontis live on Radio Tony and the Passion Project. And we have a wonderful guest today all the way from the UK. But before I introduce her live to you, Dr. Sue Palmacon is known as the Divorce Doctor. And she started out life as a teacher and took some time out to raise her family. And at that time, she was diagnosed with MS. And we'll talk to her a little bit about that later. While she worked to combat the serious physical nature of her symptoms, she enrolled in a psychology degree to combat the potential cognitive problems of an MS diagnosis. She loved studying. And as her symptoms minimized, she went on to complete a PhD in psychology. And from that, she was offered a junior lecturing position in a prestigious university. Unfortunately, her husband's ego was bruised at this time, now that she was more qualified than him and no longer financially dependent on him. They ended up getting a divorce in 2001, two weeks shy of her 50th birthday. She knew then that she wanted to earn enough money to keep the house and the lifestyle that she enjoyed. And within five years, she got a series of promotions and became a senior manager. Then in 2004, a wonderful man came back into her life after no contact for 33 years. And they've now been married for 16 years. She continued to work and eventually as part of her pre-retirement plan, she got into coaching and training and is now a master health and wellness coach and a certified divorce coach. So she helps couples consciously recouple if they decide to make up or consciously decouple if they decide to break up. Um, she has a wealth of experience in helping people with divorce and via her holistic health and wellness programs and passion mapping has been incorporated into her journey and she helps everyone on their diverse, divorce journey, pardon me. So good morning, Dr. Sue. And may I call you Dr. Sue or would you prefer Sue? Oh, just call me Sue. <laughs> oh, I like the Dr. Sue, the doctor, <laughs> d- divorce doctor. Welcome to the program, Sue. It's a delight to have you live with us here today, all the way from the UK. And I believe before before Sue came on live with us today, she'd been in a three and a half hour master pint. So effectively, she's been awake most of the evening. So Sue, let's talk about you and your journey with divorce. Um, I understand that you loved your roles in the university and I'd first like to talk about what happened with your husband. I understand that you were relatively happy before you started to educate yourself and um, go along that track of uh, lecturing. So how did that work out for you? Um, I... uh... I never realised when we first got married that he wanted me to give up work to bring up the children. And this is, you know, one of the things that I really am passionate about now is working with couples to realise what their life path is going to be together. Yes. I mean, having said that, I, I love being at home with the boys. Yes. And I really took it on board and got involved in in things that they were doing you know their sport and what have you I became a a rugby coach oh Um, wow wow never played never played rugby but loved watching it yeah so I used to coach the minis 
Yes. And um, the boys went on to quite play at quite a high level. Yes. So when I went back into teaching. Yeah. Um, I loved what I was doing. I've always always said I was, you know, I wanted to teach since I was knee high to a grasshopper. Uh huh. And but at the same time, as a, as a, as you said, I was diagnosed with MS. Yeah. And well, that you, must have been a huge shock, Sue. Well, it was. It was. Yes. I mean, you know, out, completely out of the blue. I'd been really yeah. fit because uh-huh. as a t- as a teenager, I used to swim internationally, and then as yeah. a an adult I went back into master swimming and yeah. you know swam in the UK the British the European and the world championships and stuff yeah, like that wow. and then all of a sudden bang but that didn't stop me um, no. when I in two, 1991 when I was 40 yes. um yes. I decided that I would take up sport properly again uh-huh and I competed in the um, European Masters in the modern triathlon. Oh, wow. Which is running, swimming and shooting because yes. I was, my hands were really shaky. My eyes were uh-huh. not good. So I took yes. up pistol shooting and I used wow. to shoot the length of the garage. Yeah. So, you know, that's sort did, of... did that sport help, do you think, with the MS? Oh, I'm sure it did. I'm sure it did. Yeah. yeah. You know, my, my neurologist wasn't very happy. But <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> but you know, I, I never overdid it. I knew when I had to stop, I knew I had to rest. Yes. yes. But you know, as far as I'm concerned, I've beaten it. You know, it's always uh-huh. always going to be there in the background. But yes, yes. I have unless I get really stressed or yes. really hot. Yes. It doesn't affect me. Yeah, you, so, you, um, you get to know your body, don't you? And and, yeah. and I have to agree with you, stress. I've got rheumatoid arthritis. So MS, rheumatoid arthritis, they all fall into that autoimmune disorder big group. And I agree with Sue, stress is one of my big triggers for rheumatoid flares. Yeah, yeah. And it's about learning how to manage that. Um, so that you stay healthy because you can live with these um, diseases. It, they just take a bit of management, don't they, So, Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You just need to recognise the symptoms and the yes. signals and yes. readapt. Exactly. Exactly. So we become very good at adapting our lives to manage the symptoms of, of the autoimmune disease that we have. Yeah. So, when you went back to so when the boys were a little bit older you decided that you were going to do the psychology degree had you always been interested in psychology or was it something that you sort of developed a love of later in life um well my my first degree was in geochemistry which is very black and white oh yeah 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 and i wanted something that was gray yes no clear answers and Uh When I was doing my teaching qualifications, you did a little bit of psychology there, and I thought, oh, that'll do. (laughs) But I got bitten by the bug. Yes, because it's fascinating, isn't it? It's fascinating how your mind thinks and how it has a relationship to your body and how you have the power to change the way you think and and view life. It's amazing, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And people, you know, I always say to people that psychology is the only degree that you will use every day for the rest of your life. Yes, absolutely. But, you know, you don't, don't have to be using it professionally. But yeah. when you're interacting, you're using psychology. When, you, yes. when you're making decisions, you're using psychology. Yeah. So did, did having done the psychology degree help you in the early stages of deciding that you were going to divorce because that's quite a major decision to come to that point where you decide that this is not working this is not ever going to work we need to consciously uncouple are the lovely words that you use it's hard to come to that decision isn't it Sue 
It is. It's really, really hard. I, you know, when I got married, it, I, as far as I was concerned, it was for life. Yeah. 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 But, you know, sort of, we were married to, for 25 years when yeah. we got, when we got divorced and, you know, sort of, I got a PhD, he got a girlfriend. So, oh, and then, no. and then he got a PhD later, but he oh. wasn't jealous. <laughs> oh okay but uh, the funny thing was when he was yes. writing it up yes because I'd started him off when we were still married with a oh. I'd written a I'd written a, um, a questionnaire for him yes and when he was writing it up he was sending me chapters even though we were divorced oh I'm being a, being a, a natural teacher yes you know I was, yes. I was just correcting it for him and yeah Doing it so, online, you, so. so you were able to stay relatively amicable through that divorce process? Yeah, it's not not worth falling out. You've got two children. Yeah. You were go we were going to have grandchildren. Yes. And uh, although I didn't agree with what he'd done, yeah. you know, I could That's understand. Incredibly, it's incredibly hurtful for a woman to discover. Uh, was it a younger girl, younger woman? Yeah, that he, yeah. yeah. So for middle-aged women, our age, that's a real hit in the stomach, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Because, you know, 50, yes. you're hitting menopause. Yes. The boys had left, had both gone to yes. college and left home. That emptiness syndrome. Yeah. Emptiness syndrome. And, you know, you, you get to the stage where you think, well, if we've got the future ahead of us now you know planning yes. planning retirement planning yes all the adventures that we could have yeah you know we were debt free yeah and my parents were getting older uh -huh. so you know I had the worry of of them getting older I had the worry you know sort of with the stress was my yes. MS going to flare up yeah fortunately it didn't oh well um, done because, you know, I, I, well, as you can tell, I'm, I'm so laid back that I'd be yes. horizontal if I went any further back. <laughs> what a delightful thing to say. <laughs> so you managed to negotiate your own divorce. And was it something that that process triggered that decided that you, where you decided that you wanted to help others in the divorce process? Absolutely. I mean, there was no such thing as divorce coaching when I was getting divorced. No. Yeah. But when I were when I started work at the university, I found the only senior female academic. Yes. And I went to her and I said, what have I got to do to get to where you are in the shortest possible time? Uh huh. And she said, well, you need to do this, that, you know, you need to write this paper, yes. you need to get on that committee, yes. you need to do this and that. And uh -huh. one by one, I ticked them all off. So she oh, was well, a yeah. she was a fantastic mentor. Yeah. But, you know, there's not many people that can find a mentor like that to help. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, all my life, my, you know, my, my raison d'etre has always been to make a difference, whether yeah. that's teaching or coaching or mm -hmm. whatever I do. So, you know, I, I just want to help women yes. sort of find their purpose and passion yes. and thrive yes. in this new exciting life that they're creating yes. because every end is only a new beginning. Yeah. So There's the end of a... Sorry, Sue, go on. So the end of a marriage is the start yes. of a new life. And often it happens to women in our um, 40s and 50s. And I actually feel that that is a wonderful time in a woman's life. I think that you're coming into an age where your, your child raising years, are, 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 are time is lessened. You, you never stop being a parent. But you also, there's a wisdom and knowledge that comes with being that age that I find incredibly uh, satisfying. And um, it's a wonderful age to be, don't you think? 
it's a wonderful age to discover yourself. Yes, agree. You know, if if I'm sure if I'd have been the sort of strong, independent woman that I am now when yes. I was married, uh-huh. it would have been a very different relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was, you know, I never wanted to outshine him or yes. whatever, and so I sort of buried myself. Yeah. But but now yeah. with Bill. He's yes. the wind, wind beneath my wings, you know. He's quite yes. happy to push me up and up. Yes, yes. It it, it makes a huge. Um, I I too have a husband who is very supportive and encouraging, and um, it makes a huge difference. I've experienced all the rest, and and now he allows me to do what I do, and and encourages me to do so. And it's amazing what you can accomplish when you have that support behind you. Mm. Um, in thinking about the uh, UK and you, the UK experience with COVID and the lockdown, um, have you seen the stress that that that's been causing in relationships? Oh, absolutely, been- absolutely. Yeah. Inquiries about divorce in the in yes in the family law section has increased yeah. by something like 40 percent oh wow it's wow. higher now than it is normally, normally. the first the mm-hmm. first first monday in january is normally the peak time oh really yeah why do you Straight think after that Cri- is, Sue? Christ- christmas and new year people uh-huh. thrown together mm-hmm. you know arguments over family uh-huh. and finance yes. and all the rest of it yeah the other peak is September, uh-huh. when, when the children go back to school. Right. But now, um, and this is this is true the world over. Yes. China found that there was at least I think they said fifty percent increase in in divorce inquiries or wow. people starting divorces. Wow. I have to agree that there is challenge to being locked down 24-7 in the same house in the same space, Um, even for ourselves who I consider we have a good, strong relationship, but it was still challenging. So I can't imagine what it would be like in couples and families where things weren't good to begin with and now they're Mm. in lockdown together. Um, Have you been able to help any of those couples come out the other side and decide to stay together or have most of them decided that that, that's it? No, um, it's about 50-50, the people that I'm I'm working with. Uh But, you know, I'm up up front with them and I say, all I want is the best decision for you. I'm Mm -hmm. not promoting divorce and I'm not promoting Uh that you stay together, Mm -hmm. but let's work on it yeah. and you know I've, I've just written an, an online course well it's not quite finished yet <laughs> and it's, it's called yes. marriage makeover my mastermind yes yes so that looks at communication connection uh-huh. compassion um you know that that sort of thing because that's the thing that people are complaining about we're disconnected we're not communicating yes. mm-hmm. we're arguing we've we've lost the passion and intimacy yeah yeah and when people are thrown together mm-hmm. you know they 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 ha- well they have three options don't they they, they turn towards yes. they turn away from or they turn against yes and so so your course is going to be on your website, thedivorcedoctor.com? It'll be on me me or we, me hyphen okay. or hyphen we. Okay. Um, because, you know, when, when they come through to the divorce doctor, they've yes. made the decision. Yes. And, okay. you know, with, with me or we, it's, you know, sort of me to we when they first start in. Yes. Me, me or we when they're deciding and then yes. when when they've made the decision it's either me me and we or or me on my own yeah yeah 
how have you found using your passion mapping learnings? Uh, how have you used that in helping people with their divorce journey? Um, the clients that I've used it with so far, it's been absolutely transformational. They've, uh -huh. they've come in sort of not knowing who they were. You know, yeah. they're coming out of, out of a marriage uh -huh. and not knowing who they were. And mm -hmm. just in a few short weeks working on the passion map, they yeah. can see a new life journey. They can see all the positives. They they value themselves. Yes, you know, they're, they're building up their well, refinding the qualities that were yeah. lost. Yeah, yeah. It's a very powerful process for uh, getting clarity around what you're passionate about and where you might want to go with your life, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm, I'm just getting into couples mapping and I can't wait because oh wow, I think the best place to use this is when yes. people are planning to get married, especially yes. if it's a second marriage. Yes. You know, people over 50, the, the divorce rate is now round about 50%. With oh. a second marriage, it goes up yes. to about 65%. It's, yeah. And about yes. 73% for a third marriage. Yeah. So the stats are against you to begin with, aren't they? Yeah. You, th you think about how long people plan their wedding and how yes. much money they spend on their wedding and yes. how little time they plan their marriage. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And we should be having we should be having those discussions, shouldn't we, Sue? We should be making Absolutely. sure that those couples that are intending to get married have some of the tools that they'll need to navigate marriage because it is tough um, and, and and there are tough times even for the best of couples and it it's seriously not something that you would want to ever go through because they are painful processes and um, it's, it's never a fun thing to do or decide to do. It, it's a painful process, it's hard, and uh, particularly if you're a woman uh, in that middle-aged uh, age bracket, it's going to be financially ruining for you in many instances, isn't it? It could be, it could be. Yeah. I mean, getting divorced at 50, Yes. you've only got 10 to 15 years to build up a, a pension pot yes. because... Yes. If, if like me, you'd been a stay at home mum and then work very uh -huh. part time, yes. you don't have a pension in your own right. That's right. That's right. And it becomes very difficult um, to decide and, and to work out how to build up enough money so that you can retire. But it doesn't look like you're going to retire anytime soon, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> You've no. got plenty of, of couples to work with. How has it been having this sort of wonderful career in, in your into your 70s? I'm look I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. You know, I, I've re I've found a new passion. Yes. Yes. You know, I've always loved teaching, and this to me is just an extension. Yes you know, sort of helping people to find themselves. Whereas, yeah. at, you know, at university, I'm helping people to learn how to learn. Yeah. Now I'm helping them to learn how to love themselves and others. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a powerful um, thing to be able to do. So let me just clarify, when did passion mapping, when did you discover passion mapping? I first heard about it a couple of years ago. Uh -huh. And of course, with Peter being in Australia and me being yes. in the UK, uh -huh. ne'er the twain shall meet. <laughs> so I kept saying, when's it going online? When's it going online? Yes, yes. And eventually it went online and that was it. I just yeah. got hooked. Yeah. And that was something that Peter and I very much wanted to explore, how um, we could change what Peter does 
from the face-to-face -face program that he delivers to this online mode. And increasingly, the more and more people that I'm talking to, the more and more they're saying that the process of getting themselves online, their programs online, their courses online, it opens them up to a worldwide market and doesn't limit them to a geographical lo location. So for you, Sue, um, being the divorce doctor, you can coach couples or singles from all over the world. It's just a matter of getting those time zones correct and even that is not so much of an issue if you have something online that people can do in their own time zone um, yeah. I think it's a wonderful new world and and I'm really excited for you to be able to do that work across the world yeah yeah absolutely absolutely you know I've I've sort of cornered the market locally yes, yes. the world is my oyster let's go absolutely. global absolutely Absolutely. So for those of you listening live in the US, jump on to Sue's site, which is divorce-doctor.com. And I'll get Sue to repeat her other website in a moment. Um, and even if you just want to reach out to um, Dr. Sue, she is on Facebook as The Divorce Doctor. She's on LinkedIn under Sue Palmacon, Instagram Sue Palmacon, and Twitter as well. And so, Sue, that second website that you mentioned, what was that again? It's me hyphen or hyphen we.com. Me hyphen or hyphen we.com. And yeah. that's where your courses for couples are going to be. Yeah. Yeah. And um, what else? Tell me about what you envisage for the future. I would love to have a, a course, start off with a course where people yes. learn all how to handle divorce, how to be a credible yes. um, witness. Yes. Client for the for the for the lawyers. Yes. And then um, you know, sort of then move into a membership a membership yes. group where they get yes. support from others going through the same thing. Yeah. And you know, if they want one-to-one -one coaching, they can yes. have one-to-one -one coaching, including passion mapping. Yeah. You offer all that already, the one-on-one -on -one coaching, don't you, Sue? Yeah. At the moment, yeah. I, I'm doing one-to-one -one coaching and small group coaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's for couples and singles all over the world? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Um, so, so you've got lots of things happening for you in the moment, and I can see a wonderful um, future with the work that you do and using passion maps. And um, what do you do in your downtime? <laughs> um well when the pool's open I go swimming yes 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 do you still do your do you still do any of the masters um swimming and, no uh, no yeah? unfortunately um I broke my shoulder <gasps> several years ago so I've uh, lost I've lost the uh yeah the symmetry in the swimming yeah, and then two years ago I had a knee replacement so yeah that, that puts the kibosh on it, but I still I still swim <laughs> swim for leisure. And do you uh, do you travel as well? Well, obviously, when none of us are traveling much at the moment, particularly Australia is completely locked down and closed to international travel. But when that eventually opens up, do you travel over the world, or do you like to try oh, no. and stay in the oh, UK? No, I'm, a Europe? I'm a globe yes. trotter. Yeah, yeah. I've done two round the world lecture tours. Oh, fantastic. And, and did you lecture on divorce um, in particular or, or what did you lecture on? No, it was, it was more, te more teaching yes. and learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was, when was it, 2003 and 2008. Yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, so I've been to some lovely places. Uh-huh. Have you been to Australia? I have. I've been there twice. Oh, good, good, good. So we might see you here again. Yeah, I, I nearly had a, a stepson living out in Australia. 
Oh, right. But his partner got homesick, so they came back yeah, home. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a long way, Australia, the land down under. And until we get those supersonic jets, it's a bit of a traverse across the, the world to get here, unfortunately. <laughs> but that's all part and parcel of it. Beg your pardon? That's all part and parcel of it. It is. It is. It is indeed. So we are just about out of time and I'm conscious that you have been up so, for so long. Um, Peter usually pops back in at this time to say hello and uh, goodbye. And I'll just sit, wait and see if he's going to jump on and, and say good day. Um, Hi, Sue. I've he's... just jumped oh, on. There you go. Hiya. <laughs> Just jumped on. You amaze me the way you can get up in the middle of the night and be so coherent. I agree. <laughs> I've not been to bed yet, so if I if I'd have, if I'd have been to bed, I'm not sure I would have been quite so coherent. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Sue, it has been a pleasure chatting to you this morning and I love the work that you do and a, and a big congratulations on doing that work. Again, there's not a lot of people uh, that do that and um, the process of consciously recoupling it or deciding to consciously decouple, I'm sure will keep you very busy from now and into the future. Yeah. Um, I'm going to let you go now again i'm conscious that you've not been to bed yet thank you so much for coming on radio tony and um the passion project and well, i look you forward for to me. seeing what you do in the future sue thank you for having me and enjoy the rest of your day thanks sue bye for bye. now bye sue bye hello peter hello tony we meet <laughs> again. again we meet again we do, we do. Yeah, I, I, I do find it very humbling, you know, that this work attracts so many extraordinarily accomplished people. Yes, beautiful people doing that, amazing that, things. Yeah, there's something about, you know, wishing the best for everybody else, yes. which you need to do in this, you know, in this work. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so that, that was interesting. What an inspiration she is. Yeah, I think I think just about everybody can be what can't they? I mean, you're an inspiration yeah. to me, and oh, thank you. you know, all all of the people who who you've interviewed, I think, are inspirational to me. Yeah. So they're all uniquely yeah. special, and um, each have a unique and beautiful message that is is them in a nutshell. So yeah. Yeah. So it's isn't it all about just totally accepting them the way they are you know totally um and, and just speaking to the best in people yes um or, or or just connecting with the best in people yeah so i i think we're taught to judge far too much anyway exactly. it, it's lovely and let age not be a barrier would be the other message yeah, the other thing I was thinking was, you know, are people going to think that we only work with 70-year-old people? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that we don't, we'll have a, a couple of 30-somethings next time, so. Yes, yes, uh, yes. <laughs> because it is something, the passion mapping process is something that for has something for everyone, no matter what your age, it will... Um, be helpful no matter what age, from 20-somethings to 70-somethings. You can all take something from the process that will um, give you that clarity about, oh, what am I going to do next? Or what am I really passionate about? Yeah, I mean, it's even worked for people in hospices. Yeah. You know, it's a great yeah. gift for people in hospices about to, yeah. you know, pass, that yeah. they get a sense of existential peace. Definitely. before they die you know like that yeah. they've never had before yeah so there's yeah. something just about this essence of who we are that's yeah compellingly potent i suppose yeah yeah so you know yeah. i i uh i just am continually humbled not only by the people i am able to train like sue was yes. yes but even the you know the people that I, I work with and people that yeah. they work with and yeah 
I love that it, in the, at the essence, we're all so amazing. Yes. So magnificent in our essence, every single person. Every, every human being has that particular specialness that is unique to them. And once you find that and work with that, life becomes amazing. It was good to see Sue's excitement when she said about um, being able to do the passion mapping training online versus having to do it face to face and how much that um, meant to her to be able to do it online, um, which is part of the reason why you and I partnered together was to work out how to go from face to face to having your programs online and available to that worldwide audience. And so far, it sounds like it's going to be working just fine and dandy. Well, I hope so. I mean, in the last <laughs> training, we had people signed up from, I think, um, six countries, was it eight countries? Something like that. One, two, three, six, seven countries. So where are people showing interest from? Um, well, from Africa, from Europe, from North yeah. America, yeah, from, from Thailand, see on the Asian oh, ones, wow, New Zealand and Australia, yeah, yeah, and, and and what they love is connecting with the diversity of people, yes, and of course when we create a community around or, or a mini community for the yes people trainee training, yeah there's such learning from people of different cultures and the way that they definitely yeah so you know one of the women um was a black woman from from uh the us yes and so she helped give us a like an insight more of an insight into the you know the black situation in the us yes and the... so sort of almost like straight from the horse's mouth yeah yeah um my husband and I watched a Netflix series last night um, in because we've been talking about the Black Lives Matters um, stuff that's happening across the world. And um, it, it's horrifying for me to think that um, our beautiful, um, these beautiful people have suffered so much with so much racism and uh, that particular series really uh, brought home for me that it's a generation after generation after generation of racism across many governments. And, yeah, we need to change that. Yeah. And I think one of the things I've learned through working with um, African-Americans or even Africans. Yes, yes is that they're generally much more embodied than us Westerners. Okay. So um, they're actually coming from a different place. They're coming from a more yes. integrated, embodied place. Mm -hmm. And then I think that, that, I think there's a natural fear of that because there's a strength in that. Yes. And, and if you're, you know, if, you're, if you are in the world of, you know, the intellect, uh -huh. uh, primarily then that can feel quite threatening yes because yep. at some level we're you know we're missing out on what they have uh -huh. so um i think that causes a sense of oppression as well mm -hmm. and very interesting for me to to observe that yeah yeah i would so, agree it um triggered for me that um, I, I can't stand injustice. It, uh, it, um, it, it, it embodies a feeling within my soul that hurts my soul. So when I see or hear injustice, it, it, it makes me angry and sad and, and all of those things and, and drives me to want to change um, those, those thoughts to stamp out ignorance and to push for equality across all humanity because at the end of the day, no matter what skin colour we have, no matter what background we have, we're all still human. At the end of the day, we're all just humans. And where did you get that belief from, Tony? The belief... I, I, wish, just... I, wish, more, I wish more people had that. 
that sense oh, okay. of wonder. Well, yeah, I mean, I do. I wish had more people had that. I wish more people had a sense of men and women were all in this together. Yes. Yeah. Rather than a suspicion, a suspicion of men or a suspicion yeah. of women. Yeah. Um, I actually, uh, I actually feel that it's it's linked to education, education, educating yourself, and questioning the things that we're told, the things that we see, and the the things that people like to force on us, um, and you know. Uh, questioning so the president let's say the president of the usa tweets bloody blah um and lots of people think that that is the way that you should think or speak it's only people that are strong enough to say hey that's not okay you cannot speak about other human beings in that way um and and i really hope that there's a world reckoning coming coming that will show more people standing up and saying no that's not okay no it's not okay to to be racist no it's not okay to treat women that way no it's not okay to treat men that way no it's not okay to treat children that way um I, that's the world though i want to see for my grandson yeah and how do you think they get that skill to stand up against everyone else? I think that from my personal perspective, I think that for most people, it takes living through some sort of bad experience or trauma where you recognise that you need to do some healing. And I think the process of healing calls you to, into question things and ideas and ideals and in that process you suddenly start to wake up and I guess that's that's the word I'd like the world to wake up I'd like them to realize that they're no better than anyone else and the amount of money you have in the bank does not determine whether you're a good or a bad person uh, how powerful you are does not make you any better than the um, person, the downtrodden person who just hasn't had the same opportunities as you had. If you gave each human being equal and adequate opportunity to live their best life, we would see a phenomenal earth and humanity. But as you and I know, not everything's equal. And until everything is equal, or aimed at being equal, there will always be um, the need to rise up and speak out about injustice and inequality. And as we're seeing now, black lives matter. matter. Mm. Everyone's life matters, but in particular, the African American heritage is one of disadvantage. We need to change that. Mm. Mm. And, and do you think religion's part of this? I mean, if you're a Christian, you're better, you're better than uh, other people because you're going to go to heaven and they're all going I to go to I actually have a very strongly defined view on, let us call it, religious connotation to life and that whole rhetoric that says, I'm better than you, that whole rhetoric that says you are an abominable person because you chose to have an abortion you're an abominable person because you chose to have a divorce. No, 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 no. You make the best decisions that you can make with the, the skills you have and, and the life that you've been given. And just because you choose to do those things does not fundamentally make you a bad person. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, I feel and what really... Right what yeah. right do people even have? Absolutely. What why right should, do you have to judge anyone? Yeah. What right do you have to say that anyone's truth is right or wrong? It's what, it's what they believe is real in their life and they have the right to believe that. But they don't have the right to judge other people. I just, I'm 
again, passionately opposed to judgment <laughs> of any degree because I've been at the other end of it so often in my life and it's not okay, people. It's not okay to judge. No matter what another person is doing, you don't have the right to judge them about that. Sure, you can uh, ask them about that. You can engage with them, but you we must always engage from a respectful point of view, which for me, I find easy because I, I don't judge anyone or I, I try, like I will challenge myself on anything that I think I might be judging someone on. I, I, that's an internal dialogue that I have with myself about, so why are you so hard on that person? Why are you thinking so negatively about that decision that someone's made? Uh, and that's my own personal, but not a lot of people I find do that. They're just like, oh, she did this, so she's not, we're not going to speak to her. Well, how about you find out why she had to make that decision in the first place? Show a bit of empathy, understanding and compassion and discover that it's not what, you see on the surface something far deeper and something that they've had to work through to to come up with that decision in the first place again don't judge or you're going to get my wrath <laughs> come and help us i think you've got Absolutely. an element on your, you've got an element on your passion map around that haven't you i have yeah right in the center truth and uh, truth and justice uh, right in the center of my passion map so as you can see i i'm liable to get quite vocal about judgment and and racism and ignorance and injustice it it just it makes me quite um fired up and and, and those scenes that we've been seeing out of the u.s where um the the treatment of our african american people that's not okay uh and that's a that's a that's a whole of country thing. And it's no different in Australia, the way that we've treated our Aboriginal and precious Indigenous people. Um, you know, they are fundamentally the most spiritually grounded, beautiful people I've ever engaged with. And some of the things that we've subjected them to in Australia, again, not okay not okay because yeah. they're no different from you and i and we should treat them no differently well, well i'd argue they're not different at some level they're no different but they do have a like a genuine spiritual connection with the absolutely earth. it's a it's a beautiful precious thing to see and interact with their their spiritual beliefs and their culture and, and we just don't see enough promotion or education again see it always comes back to education it always comes back to taking the blinkers off and being sorry open to learning um something different very as sue said in the interview her whole life has been about education and teaching it's such a powerful platform and it's the most powerful platform for change yeah, I think so. And again, and that's why I do what I do on radio because it's a potential place to engage with people, educate, inspire, empower, and show them. And particularly with you and I um, collaboratively working on passion mapping. And again, that, that, that's education. That's educating yourself to rediscover what you're passionate about and making that the center of your life and living your best life. Yeah, it, it's, it sounds easy. Yeah, it does uh, sound easy. It's actually not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> Although Peter does make it easy. The, the passion mapping process uh, is a little bit of work, but Peter and I'm sure all, all the rest of the facilitators that do this work are really good at drawing out those things that make you tick. And that's what passion is, the things that make you tick. Yeah. 
Yeah. Tony, I just the want to say one, say one thing about Indigenous people that I've discovered yeah. in this work. And, and, and I sort of have a great compassion for them because of it. Yes. And this has been an experience with a number of um, practitioners, I guess, in different parts yeah. of the world. North America, the Maori people, um, yes, and and indigenous people here, is that you know during the fashion mapping process you unpack really all yeah. of the things that bring people alive, yeah. and and for indigenous people it's, there's often two, almost like two selves, yes, two parts of the psyche, and one is about the conventional world, and one is about yes. their indigenous world, yes. And what happens when they're connecting those two uh-huh. and harmonizing them is they suddenly have a sense of the wholeness of their life rather than having these two parts of themselves almost at war inside themselves. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, it's extraordinary to just be working with someone in front of you who says, you know, Peter, this is the first time I've felt whole in my whole life. Oh wow! And 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 it's it's it is from that unpacking and then putting it back together. Yeah. And it, it's the same with us too, you know. Like we unpack it and put it yes. back together in a way that has its own integrity. Yes. And I don't know. I don't know. Don't know how it works. It's sort of magical in a way. I I agree. I you don't think. I was unsure how it would work. And then when it just unfolds uh, so effortlessly um, and then it's laid out in front of you, go, oh, wow. Oh, okay. So um, in terms of the that process for our Indigenous people, is, is it the power of reconnecting to their culture and their dream time and their their rituals is that really important for them absolutely absolutely yeah. and interesting enough as you know an image arises yes. and it's usually an indigenous image that arises yes and they're from, powerful images aren't they from their, yeah from their two halves of their in a sense their psyche yeah yeah so it's extraordinary you know like what can happen when you go underneath the psyche because the psyche yeah I will say the mind can argue it's with itself, but the body can't. Correct. So if you, enter, if you enter the body mind through the body, yeah, you're going with the same intention, but you get a much better outcome than if you're going to th- into the body mind through the mind. Yeah, yeah. So that's sort of part of the underpinning of the philosophy of passion mapping. Yeah. And all of the all of the inner, inner knowledge is there. Yes. You know, it, it, it's there. So, you know, we're it's helping. It's just like, it, it's like drawing it out and putting it on paper so that you can have a physical reference point, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And and when you, there is a sort of relationship between the bits of the parts of yes. ourselves that is, again, magical. Yes. So, you know, when, when we work together and you, you know, you, you had your, you know, Radio Tony disc. Yes. It was clear where it went, you know, and it suddenly yes. all of the rest of your life is in, you can see in relationship to Radio Tony. Yes, yeah. You can see the rest of your life in relation to truth and justice. Yes. So that there's something just comforting to, to know. Very that, comforting. That this is me and this is what, how the different... Um, I won't say parts of me, it's different expressions of me. Yeah. yeah. Relate to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just feel so blessed to do this work. It's amazing. It is. It, it, and I, I, I can, it just that connection with the people that you work with and then how they go out into the world and use passion maps for their own individual direction. And again, like Sue, who's discovered this whole work around divorce, but using the passion mapping process in that work. And so you've got all of these facilitators across the world 
um, we yeah, absolutely need to be training more and more of them uh, so that the ripple effects of living life passionately go out across the world. Well, I think that's that's what we're trying to do. And, and it's, yeah. you know, you're really helpful in terms of creating a, a central um, yeah. central focus, I suppose, for the training uh -huh. program. Yeah. So as you know, the, the people I was training were, were actually watching into our sessions. Yes, yeah. We discussed them here on Radio Tony, but we've already done a session. Yeah. And I've introduced them to what was happening and then they've watched a session and then we've debriefed yeah. the session. So it's been yeah. um, a really fabulous learning experience and I'm very, very appreciative and very grateful to you for allowing that to happen. Oh, it, it's been great, equally great for me too. Um, and knowing that I'm in a tiny part uh, helping you train those wonderful facilitators, that's just awesome. Yeah, so Sue, Sue was just in that last group. She's just yes. she's sort of finishing off individually and now goes into couples. Yeah. And, and the couples work I just love. You know, it's like... Yes. She's talking about was talking about consciously decoupling. Yes. But in a way, creating your own personal um, couples map is like you know it's like a conscious coupling. Yes. And it even starts with a simple thing like what's the highest expression of who we can be together. Yeah. And I don't know any couples. I've never met a couple who's well. I have actually a couple of people, a couple <laughs> of people who've actually done that. They've sat down and said, look, what's the highest expression of who we are together? Yeah. And then when we start with that, it, it's, it's, it's a gift. It's, it's an, yeah. and a gift already, yeah. even though they, and then the whole process is based on that. But it doesn't mean that it always works. You know, the other thing is there's a reality to it. Yeah. And certainly some people, when they try and get a, a, a couple's passion map together, they can't. Yeah. It doesn't knit. It doesn't yes. knit energetically or spiritually or however you yeah. think of it. And they just shouldn't be together. They just, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Peter, I think we're almost out of time. Already. <laughs> I think I think we've Goodness overshot we we've overshot our mark today and we yeah. were just getting into the whole conscious coupling um, and passion mapping. We'll, we'll leave that over for another day. Um, listen, wonderful audience, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Dr. Sue Palmacon. Uh, we really must go or the delightful Don will be um, <laughs> kick booting us off. Um, so thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, Peter, and over to you, Don. Thanks, Tony. Thank you for joining us on Radio Tony this week. Tune in next week for the next episode of Radio Tony and The Fashion Project. Live streaming each week, part of the journey. Discover your passion, learn about your purpose, and connect with Tony and Peter. This show is proudly brought to you by Passion Maps. HTTPS www.passionmaps.com That's www.passionmaps.com Live passionately every day. Use the code TONY to register for your own online deep dive program with Passion Maps. See you all next week. Bye for now.